You've probably seen a chart like this that shows the drastic decrease in developer jobs over the last couple years, and you're maybe wondering if you should even bother learning to program or just do something else instead. And in my opinion, now is actually one of the better times to learn programming. There's a ton of different reasons why, from it being easier than ever, tools that make you more powerful than ever, even as an entry-level programmer. And while this chart does look scary, there's a few other charts that I wanna show you in this video that make it not nearly as scary as this chart makes it out to be. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And yes, this chart is a true chart that shows the job postings on Indeed for software development jobs. And it's kind of based on this index. So essentially, if you look all the way back here, February 1st, 2020, that is 100%. And essentially, they're basing this entire chart off of how many jobs were posted on February 1st of 2020. So it's based on that one specific date. And if we look here, you can see it was pretty steady for a couple months. And then once COVID hit around that March, April time period, you can see jobs drop drastically to about 64% of what they were in February. So a very sharp decline. But as you can see by this chart, by the time we got to the middle of 2022, March 2022, essentially, we're at 227% of the jobs listed. That essentially means the job market over doubled in essentially two years from what we had all the way back here in February. That is a massive increase. And this is almost entirely due to COVID, more people at home, which meant these giant tech companies, you know, the Apples, Amazons, Googles, they were hiring tons of people because now more than ever, there are people on places like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, consuming more content than ever because they were either laid off, stuck at home, or whatever it was. So these tech companies hired absolutely massively during this period and ended up way over hiring what they needed. And that's why, as you can see, going into 2023 and 2024, that these job listings drastically fell. Every single year, you can see the job listings are falling and falling and falling and falling, all the way to essentially where we get to a year later in 2023, they've now dropped down to essentially that normal baseline that they had in 2020. And they've actually continued to fall past that. If we go all the way to the end here, you can see we're at about 64-ish percent. So essentially, we're at two-thirds of the job market for postings on Indeed compared to what we had all the way back in February of 2020. Now, the important thing to note is this only counts one statistic, which is the number of job postings on Indeed in the United States. And really the probably most important part is it only goes back to 2020, right before COVID started, which was already a really high point for jobs in the programming space because programming had grown astronomically in the 10 to 20 years leading up to this particular point. It became a massive job and it was just constantly growing and growing, outpacing pretty much every other job out there. To kind of showcase this, I actually have a second chart and this is a combination of two different charts. I'm just gonna brew myself down a little bit so I'm kind of out of the way. You can see this green line here. This is the number of actually currently employed software for developer jobs. So it's measuring the same statistic, but instead of being job postings, this is the number of actual people with jobs as software developers. And you can see it's again based on that index. We're starting at 2000 here. So 2000 is where our index starts. And you can see over time, it's a relatively flat right here in the you know beginning stages, and then it starts to grow. And around when we hit this 2009 point is when we have a huge spike in the number of software developers. You can see it goes from 127% all the way to 242%. So essentially the job market for software developers doubled. The amount of people hired as software developers doubled in the course of 10 years. That is a massive increase compared to pretty much any other job out there. So there's a huge increase in the number of jobs as a software developer over these 20-ish years. And then you can see, unfortunately, the data ends right here for this particular graph. So I don't have the current data for this particular data set, but we can kind of jump into the job posting section because this is also a 100% index based. So again, based on that same 2020 index, you can kind of see what happens. You've already seen this chart, but you can see here, we're starting at essentially a very high point. This 100% index is at this peak point as a software developer. So you can see that this is the biggest and most amount of jobs that software developers have had in any time in history, a massive peak for them. And that's where we're starting our index. So by saying we're at two thirds of where essentially the peak of software development was, is really not that bad of a situation to be in. It'd be essentially trying to get a job as if it was 2015 as a software developer. That's kind of the same index that we're looking at. And the software developer job market in 2015 was a great market to get in. Everyone who would have told you in 2015, become a software developer. I know when I was in school at the time during 2015, everyone was like, oh yeah, software development programming, that is the best place you could possibly be. And that's essentially the same number of jobs we have for software developers currently. Now, I know this isn't a perfect comparison because obviously there's things like boot camps and so on that have maybe saturated the job market for more junior developers because there's more people than ever learning programming, especially during that period of like 2022, 2023, and towards the end here in that 2019, 2020 region. Those last few years have been really popular for people getting into web development and programming in general. So there's definitely more people trying to get jobs, but there are still tons of jobs out there for people to land more than it actually may seem like when you just look at these charts on their own. 
And another chart I kind of want to show you is essentially the same chart, but also it's going to include nursing, which in my opinion is a field that wasn't nearly as impacted by AI, which is what a lot of people are worried about when it comes to being replaced by AI. That's what a lot of people think is happening with these different types of charts. But we can actually look at the data for nursing. This green line is the same green line we had before, and this blue line over here, the same exact blue line. That's the software developer line. The new lines are these brown lines and this red line. So the brown line is the current number of nurses that are employed across the market. So you can see here, it started at that same 100% base and it had a pretty steady growth. As you can see, there's been no spikes. It's just been a very steady growth all the way along the chart, even all the way up into the very end of this data, which is 2024. It's essentially 80% up from what it was in, 20, or in 2000. Now, if we look at this red chart, you can see nurses were very similar to software developers where they were very in demand during that COVID period because nursing was very needed because everyone was quite sick. So you can see there's a huge spike in the number of nurses that are needed, not nearly to the same level as software developers, because like I said, software developers way over hired during COVID, but you can see there's still a huge spike inside of nursing. And then you can see it slowly drops off, but it's still higher than it was before. Nursing jobs on Indeed are currently posted at about 15% higher than they were in 2020, while software developer jobs are down at 65%, so they're quite a bit lower. So you can see that there's less drop off in the actual nursing section here. But if we actually look at the number of nurses hired with this brown chart, you notice it really doesn't change that much even with those different spikes. There's some drop, you can see here there's that drop during COVID, and then it starts to raise back up as more people are hired, but there's not a huge swing in the actual number of people that are currently being employed. And I would want to imagine that if this software developer line actually continued farther, we'd see much the same thing. I'm sure there would be a spike around this period where there's lots of job postings being listed, and then there would be a decline, but it wouldn't be a decline that drops us you know, below what our baseline value was. It would just be a small decline to bring us back to this more you know, line that we had before, just to this more basic level of what software developers were, as opposed to this very inflated version over here. Another thing that I think is really important to consider is how many companies actually use Indeed for their job listings. Indeed is a quite bloated software, it's quite expensive, so a lot of companies won't post their jobs on Indeed because it's either too expensive or it's too time consuming to post there. So they're gonna use other more niche job boards specifically for maybe web developers or software developers and so on. While other jobs, maybe nursing for example, would be much more likely to have their jobs posted on Indeed. So this drop off of jobs from Indeed may not necessarily be just because software developers are dying off, but it could be because software developer companies that are hiring are maybe using other platforms instead of Indeed to actually hire software developers. Now, I unfortunately have no data on if that is true or not, because there's no good way for me to find job listings outside of Indeed, but it is something that's important to think about. Now, don't get me wrong though, getting a job right now is quite difficult, especially compared to what it was, you know, in like 2018, 2019, it was quite easy to get a job as a software developer. Nowadays, it's much harder just because there's more competition in general. And those entry level jobs are really where most of that competition is. If you're like a mid-level or a senior level developer, much easier, you know, not super difficult to get a job. But if you're in that very entry level junior position, trying to land your first job as a web developer or a programmer, that's where most of the competition is. So it is definitely harder then than it was maybe 10 years ago to get a job, but it's not nearly as difficult as people may think it is. And AI doesn't play as much of a role as you think it does. Now I have some more points that I wanna cover related to AI throughout the rest of this video, but the whole point of this section is just to tell you that if you're planning on getting into web development or programming to land a job, it's not nearly as bleak or scary as many people make it out to be. It's just not quite as easy as it was maybe you know five, 10 years ago to actually land a job. Now, speaking of AI, AI, that's another reason why I think actually now is a great time to land a job as a programmer. And that's because AI really amplifies your abilities as a programmer, especially as a more junior developer. You can really do some quite amazing stuff with AI. For example, this landing page, if we just scroll through it here, this is a, a rather professional and clean looking landing page. There's really nothing about it that I'm like, oh, this is super ugly or super bad. It's just a relatively good, plain, yes, but relatively good looking landing page that gets by with any product you need. And you may think this took me a while to make, but it took me 30, maybe 45 minutes to make because I was able to use AI to help me write pretty much this entire thing and just go back and tweak all the different stuff that I needed. But I was able to use these AI tools to write this type of landing page, which was really powerful because for me, this is not something I specialize in. I'm not super great at design and stuff like that. So having a tool that was able to help me build this was really nice. So if your goal of learning programming is specifically because you want to empower yourself to build cool things, this is the best time ever to learn programming for that because these AI tools make it so you can do even more with your skills as a programmer and you can do it even quicker. Another great example of this is the ability to write really quick and simple scripts or programs for you to do very basic things. For example, I have quite a few different scripts on my computer that I run for doing various things that happen all the time. For example, I make a lot of project-based tutorials, which means I create a ton of GitHub repositories and they all need to have the exact same format. 
So I created a really simple bash script right here, just, you know, 10 ish lines of code that goes ahead and creates my Git repository for me automatically names it the right thing, pushes it up, creates a GitHub repository, pushes the code, creates all the pull requests, everything I need to do. It adds a license for me. All of that stuff is automatically handled for me by just running one single command. And knowing how to program means that I was able to create this and save myself essentially one, two, three minutes every time I create a repository. But since I have hundreds of repositories, this has saved me a ton of time in the long haul. And with the power of AI, you can actually make it write these things for you. Now, I wrote this long before AI was a thing, but some of these other repository tools I created, for, such as this one, which I just created a few days ago, allows me to actually delete a bunch of different files in a certain scenario. It's not super important, but the way I record, it allows me to essentially delete all my extra files. For example, here is my recording list. And you can see here when I record, I get two of the same file. One is my recording version and one is like this remuxed version, which is used for editing and so on. So I need to delete this old copy of the file. Normally I would manually go ahead and delete each one of those files, but I figured that's kind of a waste of my time. So instead I had AI write me this program. It took me 10 seconds. I just typed in my prompt, told me what I wanted. And I had a program that worked immediately right out of the box. I just run this and it deletes all those extra files that I no longer need. And this doesn't have to just be done with scripts. This can be done with literally anything. You can create really simple UIs, some websites, even whole products can be created by using AI because you can essentially customize it and have it do exactly what you want, which is really, really powerful and something that we never had before. But I think to be able to really take the full advantage of these different AI tools, you really need to understand programming at least at a basic level. Because if you run into any problems or you wanna make small minor customizations, knowing what the code does and just going in there and changing it is much quicker than trying to deal with the AI that's either not working properly or causing bugs or just not doing what you want. Knowing how the code works to be able to tweak it yourself, I think is crucial. Now, another reason that it's the best time ever to learn programming is because it's easier than ever. Not only can you do more than ever, but it's also easier than ever because of tools like AI to be able to help you with learning different things. Now, I don't think that AI is ever going to be as good as like a structured teacher telling you exactly what you need to do and giving you a structured learning path. But a lot of times on YouTube or different courses, you're not gonna have all the different knowledge that you need in those places. And instead you are gonna have questions about very specific things that are not answered. This is where your different AIs are gonna be really useful. For example, I recently was using ChatGPT to help me out with different OBS settings. And I was kind of asking it, hey, what does this particular option do? It would give me a nice explanation. And then I would ask it, hey, what does this particular thing do? It would give me an explanation. So I was able to fine tune my different recording settings for various different things that I was trying to do. And you can do the exact same thing if you're trying to learn programming. You may watch a video or take a course on certain JavaScript concepts. And while you're taking that course, you start to get to a point where you're dealing with something kind of niche. And you're like, you know what? I don't really understand what the strict mode thing is supposed to be. I'm gonna just type into ChatGPT, what is strict mode inside of React? And now it'll actually spit out that information for me. Maybe link me off to some documentation so I can double check it because oftentimes these different AIs hallucinate things, especially with more complicated niche topics. They may just make something up. So it's important to double check what you're getting from these AIs, but it's the most powerful way of learning that I've seen since you know forever because now I can specifically ask the question I want and get an exact response for what it is, which is great, like I said, when you have those more niche situations. And for example, if you're running into different errors, a lot of times you're programming and you're first getting started, one of the hardest things is the really common and different errors you run into. You don't really know how to debug yet because you're just getting started learning. Well, you can type those errors into the actual AI that you're using and it can help you learn to debug. The important thing I would remember though, when you're doing this is don't just tell the AI, hey, solve this for me. Instead, ask it, how do I solve this? Because then you can actually learn along with it. You don't want to use the AI to replace what your thinking is. You notice I didn't tell the AI, give me the best recording settings. I instead said, what does this setting do? What does this setting do? What should I do with this particular thing? I'm asking it how these things work so that I can understand that and make the best decision based on my situation. If I just told the AI, give me a different setting that I should use, it's probably not gonna be perfect. And a lot of times it did try to give me recommendations. You can see here, it's like, here's the default, here's some recording settings, like here's what we recommend. And those recommendations often weren't actually what I went with because I needed things fine tuned to exactly what I needed. So when you're learning with AI, just make sure that you're trying to make sure it explains its process for how things are happening. Because really the way that you learn is by trying to problem solve and constantly try to fail and solve and fail and solve. And some people use AI a little bit to kind of cheat that process and no longer actually fail with things. Instead, as soon as they hit a roadblock, they make the AI solve it and then they continue onward. And it may feel like you're learning, but you're actually just kind of skipping that learning process and instead just moving past it and letting the AI take care of it. 
So instead, it's important to understand how these different things work, why the problems you ran into were there, and you know how you actually go about solving those different things. And AI is really good at explaining those things to you as well as helping you solve them. Now, lastly, to kind of jump back onto the job market style side of things, you may be asking, you know, will AI actually replace my job? Because it's really powerful. It can create these really cool landing pages and it can teach me these really cool things. This means I'm more powerful and more productive than ever. And AI autocomplete is really great at helping me code even faster. So my answer to that question of will it replace your job is essentially a yes and a no, and mostly a no. If your job is specifically, all I do is create landing pages for you know small websites, then probably your job is going to get replaced by AI because even someone non-technical can go ahead and prompt their way to a site that looks probably 90% as good as what I've created here. And that's a relatively good looking landing page and most people aren't gonna pay you hundreds or thousands of dollars to create essentially this same thing, but 10% better because this is good enough for them and it's essentially free for them to create something like this as opposed to paying you as a freelancer to create something like this. So that style of job where you're just doing a really niche specific thing, which is like I create you know landing pages that are just plain HTML and CSS, that's probably gonna get replaced by AI. And honestly, it's probably already been replaced by like Squarespace, Wix, and so on. What most people don't realize, especially more junior developers, is that as a software developer, you're not paid because you can write code. You're paid for your ability to solve difficult problems. That's essentially all software developers are. Are there people that see problems and they create solutions for those problems. AI is really not very good at solving problems. It's really great at doing what you tell it to do, but unless you know what the solution to that problem is, the AI is going to struggle to actually create the thing like you want it to be created. So if your job is to actually be a software engineer and you're actually developing features for software and creating different things and doing it in a way where it's like, hey, these are hard problems and I need to figure out good ways to solve them, that type of job is super secure. And also when it comes to like writing really good and clean, well-tested code, things like that, that's another place where you're very, very safe because I've noticed from pretty much all my experience with writing code with AI is it often will write decent code, but it never really gets beyond a junior developer level of code. Oftentimes I see a lot of things inside of the code that's really not great. The way it handles TypeScript types I think is really funky. Most of the time it doesn't actually do it very well. So I have to go back and change all the types to be what I would think that they should be. So it doesn't really write super clean code, but it writes code that gets the job done. And if all you do is rely on AI to write your code, you're gonna end up with a project that's all right, but it's super brittle and really hard to maintain, which is why you still need software developers, even if you're writing most of your code with AI, because you need to make sure you change the code to make it cleaner, to make it better, more maintainable, tested, and so on. The important thing really when you're learning to become a software developer, if it's kind of the first thing you're getting into, is really focus more on the problem solving side of things. How do I go from problem A to problem B to solution C that's going to solve both of those different problems? All those different steps of how do I critically think, those are the things that are actually the most important. So when you're learning, focus on those things and don't overly use AI because AI essentially does some of the problem solving for you. It takes that part of your critical thinking in your brain and offloads it to the AI. So you really wanna focus on training that side of your brain because that's what you're gonna get paid for as a developer. You're gonna get paid to do that critical thinking instead of just churn out you know, landing pages like this. And in my opinion, that's actually great because churning out these landing pages, I mean, it's kind of fun, but after a while it gets kind of boring. It's the same thing over and over again. But doing critical thinking to solve hard and complex problems, that's incredibly enjoyable and rewarding. And that's what companies are gonna to wanna to pay you money for if you can get to that level of being really good at problem solving and writing out clean code. So when I'm learning to code, if I was starting from scratch, I would really focus more on the problem solving side of things and less on the actual syntax of the code, especially because AI can help you with a lot of those different things. Now, if you wanna actually see how I built out this whole landing page, as well as the entire project behind this, which is like an AI powered job preparation project, I'm gonna link that video right over here. It's a massive project based video that not only shows you how you can use AI as a coding tool, but also how you can use AI inside of a project as a startup SaaS style system. So I highly recommend you check out that video. And with that said, thank you very much for watching watching and have a good day.